Hey guys, this is Mary Dade from Kingdom Blueprint. I'm super excited to come to you with this word. The Lord and I were in um, prayer earlier and he was kind of showing me a vision. A lot of you are in birthing season and it's exciting because as you're in birthing season, we feel the pains of birth, but a lot of you are struggling in seeing the promise of what God is calling you to birth out this season. And the biggest thing he wanted me to share with you guys today is praising him until you see it manifest. We have to praise him. When he was telling me he was restoring my marriage, he said, close your eyes carnally, open your eyes spiritually, and speak it out until you see it in front of you. A lot of us need to do that. A lot of you are being told marriage restoration is here. Your spouse is coming home. It's time to prepare. It's time to get ready. It's time to bird the new but you're sitting there and you don't know what to do about it. And what's the, the thing the enemy is going to try to do is he's going to distract you. He's going to show you the opposite carnally to get you not to speak out the truth and speak out what's happening spiritually. And this is the key. You have to be able to speak out the truth. You have to be able to speak out the word of God. God's word does not come back void. So saying, thank you, God, for my marriage being restored. Thank you, God, my spouse is home. Thank you, God, that I can trust you. Thank you, God, I can trust you with my spouse. Thank you, God, for marriage restoration. Thank you, Father God, that my husband's eyes have been opened, that my husband's ears have been unplugged. Thank you, God, for that new home. Thank you, God. We have to keep thanking him and praising him because that's really how you're going to get through the birthing process in preparation of the season he's calling you to. As well as thinking about the wilderness, before they were going into the promised land, you cannot take anything from the wilderness into the promised land. What happens in the wilderness? Any of your fears, any of your doubts, any of your worries, any of your struggles, any of the mindsets, the lies, the behaviors, the self-sabotage, the patterns that the enemy had you in, in the wilderness cannot go into the promised land with you. So you have to let these things go. You have to be willing to step into the new. A lot of you um, have taken our self-sabotage challenge and it was helping you guys to identify if I'm self-sabotaging, I can't be in a place where I can receive correction or conviction to bring healing in my own heart. Once you're no longer self-sabotaging, you can face your own heart. You can identify the areas where yeah, you know what, God, I see a lot of fears and I have to face them, right? That's the biggest thing. When you're stepping into the promised land, you have to face your fears. Guys, you are going to have to face those fears of rejection, that fear of abandonment, that fear of being alone. These are all attached to a spirit of fear. These are all things you have to fight. You have to embrace. You have to face in order to have restoration of your marriage or restoration of your identity in Christ. And so before he restored my marriage, he really took me through a season where I had to learn how to walk fearless. You cannot be afraid. You cannot have fear and have faith. You cannot serve two masters. You have to choose one. And so a lot of you are in a situation where God is showing you areas where you're like, yeah, I don't want to talk to my spouse about that. I don't want to communicate with them. What if they don't say anything back? What if they blow me off? What if they cuss me out? What if they do? You can't care. Approval of man and people pleasing, people pleasing has to come last when it comes to restoration. It's, I know who I am in Christ. I know I'm accepted. I know I'm loved. I know I'm redeemed. I know I'm forgiven. So it doesn't matter what I've said. It doesn't matter what I've done in the past. I have been forgiven. I have been set free. So the fear of abandonment is not real. The fear of rejection is not real. I'm not rejected. I'm accepted. You guys are going to have to face these things head on. Part of birthing is facing the pain, facing the pain, because if you don't face the pain, you can't have the promise. You can't birth out the promise of the Lord without facing the pain of what's stuck. Okay. And so I'm excited for where God is taking you guys. But the key here is you have to be able to keep praising him, keep thanking him. Guys, the opposite of the spiritual realm, when you guys are having dreams of your spouses coming home, you're having dreams of your spouses together, of new weddings, new marriages, all this new that God is giving you in dreams, how do we, allow, how do we partner with the Lord in the manifestation of what's going on in the spirit realm to happen on earth is you have to speak it out. The life and death is, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Oh, the enemy is trying today. I don't care. He has no authority. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And you have to be willing to speak out what you believe 
before you see it. That is faith. I did not see restoration in my marriage. I saw the opposite in front of me. And every single day, I would fight with my spouse. We would have these ugly conversations. I would go to the go to my closet with the Lord. I would cry out my heart, God, I don't like this. I don't feel good in this, but I trust you. Thank you, God, marriage restoration is here. Thank you, God, my husband is safe. Thank you, God, you are, you are in this. Whatever you need to say, those affirmations are so important. You have to be able to speak it out, you guys, because what you say, what you speak, you plant. And if you're not planting it, if you're not planting it, you're not going to get a harvest of it. And so that's really identifying how do you have your promise? How are you in preparation for the promise that God is birthing in you is being able to speak it out because that is faith. We don't physically see God in front of us. But as you grow in your relationship with the Lord, you see the court of heaven. You see angels. You're having encounters with the Lord. You're seeing into the spiritual realm. And for, a, for us to be able to partner with the Lord in the manifestation of marriage restoration manifesting in front of us on the earth, we have to be able to speak it out. When we speak out what God is promising, he can align it. He can cover it. He can guide it. He can direct it. He can provide for it. But we have to be able to speak it. And a lot of you guys, this is what the enemy is going to hit you with. He wants you to doubt you're even pregnant. He wants you to worry that the baby's going to get hurt. He wants you to be doubting the promise that God is saying you're pregnant with. You can't doubt it doesn't matter what the doctors and the people are saying. You can't be pregnant. You do. Think about, you have to let go of the naysayers. You have to let go of the people that are doubting, that are trying to instill fear in you. It's either you trust God to be God or you don't. And you have to choose right now. And so many of you are in the season of marriage restoration. So many of you are in the birthing process of marriage restoration right now. But the enemy does not want you to see it. And he doesn't want you to understand it. And so in order to be able to step, you have to start praising God. Thank you, God, that my spouse is home. Thank you, God, that my marriage has been restored. Thank you, God, that I can trust you. Thank you, God, I have faith in you, not fear. I thank you, God, that I have overcome every evil, everything that is in my way, I have overcome in the name of Jesus. You have to start speaking out the truth and you have to start planting it because then you will have restoration. Guys, it is exciting because as you speak it, you believe it. As you believe it, you receive it. As you receive it, you will see it manifest in front of you. But the biggest key is you have to say it. And the enemy is trying so hard to come against your word, to, to come against what you're speaking out. He's trying to fill you with this doubt. He's trying to fill you with this worry. So take a second and think about that. Lord, do you, do you give me worry? No. Do you give me doubt? No. I need to trust the process. I need to trust you for who you are. I need to trust that you are the God that you say you are. And it really is about faith. It really is. Are we going to put our faith in God or are we going to put our faith in fear? Because when you put your faith in fear, you're serving Satan. And that's the truth. When you have fear and you're taking fear over faith, you're worshiping Satan. And I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm being real with you and I'm being raw with you because that's the truth. And when God had showed me that, I don't want to serve that master. I want to serve God. So God, I repent, right? This is where we come to the Lord and we say, God, I repent. I am scared. I am scared of my husband's rejection. I am scared of being abandoned. I am scared of being alone. So God, help me face those fears because I know that's not real. So whatever lie the enemy has that's keeping me in deception, whatever lie the enemy has that's giving him legal ground to stick around, God, show me. Show me the lie. Help me to come out of agreement with those lies. Help me to walk in faith. Help me grow my faith, my trust in you. God, I want to trust you despite what I see in front of me. I want to believe in your word. Help me to believe that your word is enough. These are the things that we need to be saying to the Lord. Guys, marriage restoration is messy. Okay, I don't know who... I, I don't know where you're getting your facts from thinking marriage restoration is all about un unicorns, rainbows, and butterflies, <laughs> but it's not. Marriage restoration is messy. God is going to give you back your spouse 
And then you're going back to where all of the seeds you both planted in that worldly marriage to uproot. The first season of marriage restoration is uprooting season. So what does that mean? All of the bad seeds he planted, all of the bad seeds you planted are all going to be shown. You're going to see that bitter fruit in front of you and it's going to be uprooting season and it's going to be time to uproot them. You are not going to be ready for an uprooting season in marriage restoration if you're still dealing with condemnation. If you're still dealing with not receiving God's grace and mercy, if you're still trying to judge and criticize your spouse, you're not ready to show them mercy and grace if you haven't received it yourself. So the key is we have to be able to face our fears. We have to be able to face the things that are keeping us stuck. This is part of the birthing process, knowing that, yes, this is hurting. Yes, the pain. For those of you who have had children, right, the actual pain what gets us through it? Knowing that at the end of the birthing process, we get to hold our child in our arms. That's what you have to think of. I'm going to get to lay in bed with my spouse again. I'm going to get to expand God's kingdom with my spouse. We're going to be breaking generational curses together. So the pain that I'm dealing with right now is worth it. Bring it. Bring it. God, I'm ready. Prepare me. Help me. Equip me to have restoration of my marriage. And the first step is restoration of our identity in him. And once you know you're accepted, you know you're loved, you know you're worthy of being loved, you know you're forgiven, the rest comes a lot more simple because you're no longer believing the lies that are keeping you stuck in self-sabotage. You're no longer believing the lies that are keeping you stuck in that mentality and those bad behaviors and those in that um, judgment and criticism of your spouse. We have to be able to have eyes of compassion for our spouse. If God cannot trust his son to come home because you're gonna slander him, why would he bring him home? If God cannot trust you to be loving and supportive and loving your wife in an understanding way, why would he bring his daughter home to you just for you to judge or to criticize? That's not the God we serve. So we really have to check our hearts right now in preparation of restoration and be able to identify the yuck in us and not look at it like, oh, I suck, all this condemnation. Get rid of a spirit of condemnation. That's not the God we serve. It's being able to have conviction and bring correction so we can have restoration. But if you can't be corrected, if you can't get to a place where God can convict you of your own things that he's trying to heal in you, correction can't come. And if correction can't come, restoration of your own identity in Christ can't come. So I hope this encourages you guys. Be excited. This is an exciting thing. I love when God convicts my spirit. I love when he shows me something in my heart that needs to be convicted, that needs to be corrected, that needs to be healed because it's one step closer. It's building relationship with God. And so we have to look at it as we are not afraid of the new. We are not afraid of facing our hearts. We're not af afraid of facing the ugliness inside us. A lot of us are born with generational curses that we don't even know about, but God does. So we have to be able to face these things head on so we can have the restoration that God does desire for us and that we desire as well. Amen. So I hope this encourages you guys. Keep praising him. Keep speaking out what he says is happening. That's how you align with what he's showing you in, the, in your dreams. If you need any help, I've helped a lot of people with interpretation of dreams. Reach out to me. Um, I think I the, our, our phone number is in the contacts underneath. If you guys want to reach out, we, you guys can text us. You guys can call us. But we're excited. We're here with you. We're excited for you. Don't be scared. It's time to become fearless. It's time to face those fears, face those doubts, face those worries, because those can't go where God is taking you. Amen. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful night. Bye.